What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to Two Guys Watching Football, where we are going to do a very quick reaction video to the news of Tyree Phillips being replaced, uh, released. The reason I want to do this, obviously, he's an offensive lineman. It's my wheelhouse. I was also a Tyree Phillips guy, so I kind of want to share some of my thoughts on why that happened um, and talk a little bit about O-line development uh, in general. So I'm going to try and keep this short, tight, um, but thanks for tuning in. If you guys have questions, drop it down uh in the comments and, and we'll get to them so kind of want to start with the context around tyree phillips so as we know tyree phillips started at right guard in week one uh of 2020 and actually progressed quite well um i thought going through the film he had against pittsburgh and philly which were week six and eight um when he saw guys like fletcher cox guys like stephan to it um i thought he played extremely well and i was very very happy with his progress that year in week eight, he gets hurt. He comes back from his injury and ends up playing right tackle, doing that rotation he had going with uh, with DJ Fluger. And he just didn't look like an offensive tackle. Really struggled. Um, we saw him specifically struggle in the Bills game, uh, the playoff game, sorry. Um, and then going into 2021, pretty similar. He wins a left guard battle. They bring in Kevin Zeitler to play right at guard. They, he wins a left guard battle, gets hurt week one against Vegas. So... When we talk about reasons why a player didn't develop, it like I'm going to talk a lot right now about how I think the Ravens let him down. There's like that doesn't mean that Tyree Phillips is excused. It doesn't mean he didn't do anything um, to negatively impact his own development. So it's it's more of a what I think was the bigger issue. But obviously, staying healthy that's a, that's something the Ravens organization can't control. They put him in a position to succeed at the gate by starting him at offensive guard in week one of both seasons. He got hurt in both seasons, ends up at tackle. And that's the key. So that's where I want to kind of focus some of this because I thought you could kind of tell. And if I go back to my post-draft comments uh, from 2020, I did think he could develop as an offensive tackle. I saw him at in his college state playing offensive tackle, and there were things that I thought he did specifically against power rushers that I thought would stick at the NFL level. But I didn't have comparative film to see him at guard. And so why is that important? Because when you watch Tyree Phillips at offensive guard, and then you watch Tyree Phillips at offensive tackle, you can see his technique really struggle to make that transition. And that's why it's so hard to just be like, oh, we have a slow athletic tackle. Let's just put him at guard. It's a completely different skill set. It's a completely different technique that he needs to learn. It's easier for some guys. It's not easier for all. I think what we learned with Phillips is that the moving around is what really hurt him. And that's what I think was the fault of the Baltimore Ravens organization. After 2020, I think they should have just stuck him at guard. He got hurt. The injury sucked. They didn't have the offensive tackle depth, as we know, um, in 2021. And so they had to put him out at right tackle after McCary got hurt. So I, I get that kind of context of it. But... So, you know, it, it's it's just that's on the Ravens to put him in a position to succeed. And he kept ending up at offensive tackle where he was not going to succeed. Um, so I guess, like, let's talk a little bit about what the difference in the techniques are. So as an offensive tackle, especially against speed rushers, it's paramount to get out of your stance quick and to get wide. And that's why you the number one thing you hear about when you're dropping in your vertical set, get your range, get out of your stance quick, get out wide. In doing so, you're taking a lighter, longer stride length. So you're taking a bigger kick step, a bigger post step in terms of distance covered at offensive tackle than you do at offensive guard. At offensive guard, the requirement is to be quicker. And I think that's kind of the missing nuance is people think you just put slower on athletic guys at guard and everything's fine. Well, those guys still need to be able to deal with the quickness. And so you see shorter, choppier steps. And that technique difference between tackle and guard is where Tyree Phillips struggled the most as a pass protector. He could not make that transition. You would see him move into guard, and then he was kind of taking those longer steps, oversetting on guys. You'd move him to tackle, and he struggled to get the, the range. It wasn't that he couldn't get there in his vertical set or in his 45-degree set. It was that he was taking too short of strides. So that's the biggest thing that I saw in terms of specific technique. Um, as a run blocker, I think he was average at, at both spots. 
Um, he really, really struggled this preseason as an offensive tackle, as a run blocker. Um, but that's kind of the, that's what I saw. And so I think that was very clear on tape. I think the Ravens would have saw that on tape and they kept putting him to tackle because they didn't build tackle depth. Um, so I think this, this off season was mostly about like through the preseason was mostly about trying to show him as a guard and a tackle to, um, have him multiple spots so that they could trade him. That's why they kept 11 offensive linemen. Obviously they couldn't move him. So as they were picking up waivers, they decided to cut him. Uh, so they tried to showcase him. We all thought they were showcasing Ben Powers. It was uh, it was Tyree Phillips all along. So that's really what I have for you guys. I don't want to drone on. Um, I just wanted to kind of give my thoughts, my specific thoughts from watching him. Um, so, I mean, you know, and some of it is on Tyree Phillips. I mean, he, he isn't excused. He's not innocent in all of this. It's on him to, you know, be the master of his own destiny. But I seriously think if they would have just left him at guard after 2020, I think we're looking at this a lot differently right now. That's all I have for you guys. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. Peace out, everyone.